I see in ten minutes. Yeah, about a minute. Call the meeting to order. Angels Camp City Council, Tuesday, March 15th. Please rise. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> We had three items on closed session this afternoon. Conference with labor negotiators for the police MOU city employees representatives, and there was no action taken. We gave the uh, council members uh, directions. Item number B was conference with legal counsel on uh, exposure to litigation. There was no action taken on one item, and on the other item there was Two employees of the sewer plant that were given promotion. Item number C, on the performance evaluation of the city administrator, no action was taken. Approval of the agenda. Anybody got a problem with the agenda? Anybody in the audience? <laughs> I'll move that we accept the uh, agenda as, as printed. I'll second. It's been moved by Councilman Lynch, seconded by Councilman Morris to approve the agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 4 0. Staff updates. We'll start with Vanessa. Good evening. Uh, Vanessa Padaka, City Engineer. You all hear it all right? No. Something wrong there. Really close. Hello. Hello. <laughs> really close. You're loud. Close. Vanessa Apodaca, City Engineer. Uh, you guys have my written report in the packet. Just as an update, the. I still can't hear it very well. We've increased the sound. <coughs> now try it. Try it. Try it now, Vanessa. The uh, Caltrans encroachment permit was received for the bus stop. That's a good thing. We've been waiting a long time for that. Um, and then also for the 2011 street improvements, uh, the plans and specs have been completed, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. Thank you. Any questions for Vanessa? Okay. David? Uh, good evening. David Richards, the um, interim city administrator. I have a couple items to bring to your attention. Uh, the first being the hazard mitigation plan uh, that the county has been putting together. Uh, we have a draft. Uh, it's uh, had staff comments and will be coming to the city council with a resolution to approve that the first meeting in April. The water audit uh, continues. Uh, there have been a number of meetings with Stetson Engineering and it's proceeding on schedule. The wetlands mitigation uh, out, um, this concerns the LLD, uh, is the draft RFP is under review. Uh, Mr. Uh, Corletto uh, prepared the draft and I'll be um, uh, amending it to some extent and with that will be forwarded to the council for its consideration as well at the first meeting in April. On the item of vacation rentals, the uh, planning department has uh, reviewed the ordinance uh, requirements for the vacation rentals, and uh, this was done at the uh, Personnel and Finance Committee meeting that was uh, decided that uh, minor amendments needed to be made to uh, uh, two ordinances that will also be uh, presented to the council, but uh, at the April 19th meeting. I uh, normally have a staff meeting at 9 a.m. Uh, following the council meetings. 
uh, the next day after the council meetings, but I won't be having a staff meeting tomorrow. So uh, if you planned on attending, any of you council members, uh, we won't be there. Uh, I've got uh, uh, a meeting to attend with Garrett. A couple items in other reports that I'd like to bring to your attention, if I can find my mark. In the uh, wastewater treatment facility report uh, indicates that the installation of the belt filter press has begun. Uh, that's gone quite far, actually. Uh, we're waiting for the serpentine belt that uh, distributes the, um, what's it called? Sludge. Biomass sludge uh, to uh, one of the other uh, area uh, containment areas and so uh, that installation is uh, well underway and it's really quite interesting if you would like to start a uh, step go out there uh, we can show you what's uh, uh, how it works and while it's not operating yet maybe we'll wait to have a grand opening and then everyone can come out and, and watch the process mm -hmm. it's, it's really it's yeah, really pretty, it's really pretty uh, should I say keen uh, Okay, in the fire department, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, this sort of this training uh, item uh, on the fire department report uh, is here um, every month. Uh, it's noted that uh, two fire department training nights of so paid staff and paid on call staff are held. Uh, they do in-house training uh, as well as other training uh, throughout uh, the county that uh, different departments sponsor. And uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. To your attention, and there are also there's also a fire department uh, officers meeting that's uh, held as well. And uh, uh, I'm sure uh, you would find it interesting if you would uh, come to any of those. If anyone who's interested, I can give you the dates of those meetings. They're the same nights every month. That's all I have. Thank you, David. Any questions for David? No, it's good. Very, very. Comprehensive, and thank you for including the comments on water, wastewater, and, and fire. They're, they're, they're doing a good job reporting. <clears throat> and incidentally, all those are on our websites. Anybody has any any interest, just go to the website and look at the attachments. Every document that the council members have in their packet is right available for, for the public to look at. So when you hear the comments, uh, it's all available. Thanks, David. Richard? Just one item there. I'll be undertaking an investigation to determine who... Uh... Put this in my box. <laughs> what, is that? what is it? Shark. Can you hold it up now? <laughs> an investigation is underway. <laughs> you working on that, Todd? Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He hasn't taken a report. Yeah. We got a fish here somehow. I don't know how it works. It's a shark. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> You're on television. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Todd? I'm all under police. I don't have anything to add to the report. Thank you. Any questions for Todd? David? Uh, let me ask you, thank you very much for, for participating in that uh, ACPA uh, uh, meeting oh, yeah. and having uh, having your dog there and, and also the fire, fire had their, their, uh, their animal there. That was a pleasure. That was nice. David? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dave Hannum, uh, Planning Director. Uh, just want to, besides the written report, want to give you some updates because I've had some updates since I've written this. In terms of the facade grant, uh, we met with the consultant. Uh, we tried to go out for uh, numerous bids on the historical preservation specialists to do the study. Uh, we only received one bid, so we are pre we are preparing a sole source um, a, a, a sole source um, agreement with the state to allow us to use the consultant who did uh, prepare uh, uh, scope of work. Uh, in terms of uh, the recruitment grant, we're meeting next, I think next week uh, or a couple weeks from now uh, on that. Also with wayfinding, uh, the wayfinding grant, we're, we're going to be meeting uh, with, uh, with Terry on that to get that project started. Um, 
we are, I've been uh, working on um, uh, LAFCO with the regarding the uh, sphere um, and uh, found out some more information today so we'll be ready to go for the March 21st LAFCO meeting uh, and basically that's about it uh, unless you have any other questions or on any projects I have I can hopefully answer those questions no problems with LAFCO not at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions for David? Okay. Moving right along, council updates. Okay. The only thing I have is I attended the uh, Council of Governments meeting, and um, we're still in the process of hiring a new executive director. That's it? That's it. Stuart? I haven't attended any meetings since uh, LAFCO, which we talked about at the last meeting. Okay. Jack. No updates. Uh, on, the, uh, on the 7th of March, I attended the uh, personnel and finance uh, <laughs> as an alternate to you, and uh, we talked about uh, a number of, of issues uh, that are ongoing, <laughs> and uh, I, I don't recall anything uh, outstanding to, to you. Uh, staff uh, preparing a report on the uh, uh, sources of uh, TOT funds. Transit occupancy tax. That's right. That's the only thing I. Uh, on uh, the 10th, Thursday the 10th, uh, there was a meeting uh, on the centennial celebration of the 100th anniversary of the city. If you say 100th anniversary of the City of Angels. The, uh, the establishment of as a city done in 1912 and it was agreed that the special celebration time will be in late September of 2012. Lots of planning going on, lots of discussions. There'll be another uh, meeting shortly and uh, continuing on. So there is a, the beginnings of a centennial uh, celebration of the establishment of the City of Angels. Uh, and then on the, uh, the 15th, that was today, I, I attended a Utica Power Authority uh, uh, Power and Water, where we're looking at the uh, ag rate, the agricultural water rates structure. We review that every day, and we'll have further discussions at the next uh, Utica Power Authority meeting. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you, Jack. <clears throat> I attended uh, last Friday, I attended a tree planting in Utica Park. We have the neatest little park in Calaveras County or most other counties. And the Calaveras Garden Club donated a couple of trees and we planted them with a bunch of school kids and it was very, very, very well done. It was, it was, uh, <coughs> makes you feel good to see people that are interested in your community that wants to do things like that. And it really was uh, a nice event. And last night I went to the ACPA thing where the city dogs were there, was quite proud of our police chief and uh, fire chief. The dogs did their thing and uh, everybody was everybody was real pleased with it. Is that not true, Bob? It's true. Okay. And that's about all I have. <clears throat> Moving on to public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wishing to address the council on any matter not on the agenda. Remind you of a three minute limit. Any public comment? Step up to the podium. Sir. Ann Forrest, 1545 Tryon Road. Um, as uh, chair. Oh. As chairman of the uh, branding leadership team, I wanted to issue a public thank you to Councilman Stuart Raggio, who um, in fulfilling his promise not to take his uh, stipend, council stipend um, from the uh, city, has uh, uh, arranged with the city to have it donated to the branding program uh, to help support that. And uh, we greatly appreciate that, and that will help um, the brand leadership team do uh, more. Uh, I think people have had a chance to see the poll banners that are in historic um, 
Main Street. There are 13 of them up. Well, there are only 12 because one, one poll doesn't have brackets, but um, uh, sometime over the next few weeks, the Public Works will be installing another 23 very large pole banners, eight-foot pole banners, that will extend from Angels Inn at the north down to the top of the hill uh, where the large PG&E poles are. And uh, that's just one of uh, many programs that uh, the brand leadership team has. And also want to direct the public to the fact that on all the banners, you'll see the new marketing website for the city, angelscampfund.com, which allows people to plan programs uh, and vacations or just you know activities has, uh, from mild to wild. So uh, please try to take a chance to, I mean, take time to look at that too, but we thank Stuart Raggio. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ann. Any other public comment? Yeah, my name is Rich Lockamese. I'm a trauma expert, and I've been in life support and worked with life support for over 50 years. I closed out my career working with ALS, MS patients, and patients that weren't capable of taking care of themselves. What I'm trying to do is get on board a committee meeting to think about doing some medicinal help for these people. These patients need their help, and I would like to get a, a committee established so that we could all sit down and talk about the benefits of it. This is going to be a health club involving medicinal marijuana. This is going to be a chiropractic. It's going to have antioxidant treatments. We're also going to get involved with some hyperbaric medicine. All these things you probably don't know anything about, but they're wonderful things. And I would like to get a committee together to see if you would be interested in uh, being part of this procedure. We can bring a lot of revenue into the community probably somewhere around $150,000 to $200,000 a year, just on taxations alone. This is not the first time. This has been going on since the 1960s. So it's kind of interesting to see how lack of education is in the process. So what I'm here for is if we can get a committee, I'm more than glad to give my expertise, and we can all sit down and talk about it. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll contact you. Okay. Okay, moving right along. Any? Oh, I'm sorry. Any more public comment? <clears throat> George Fry, 308 Elderberry Lane. First off, I'd like to thank the uh, City Council members for uh, giving raises and promotions to the two uh, wastewater folks. Thank you very much. Whoever. Uh, Spearheaded that, uh, a special appreciation. I also would like to thank Stuart for uh, giving up his stipend and uh, supporting uh, the BLT. I'm here this evening because I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, one of them has to do with the resignation of our city council member, Craig Turco. I just want to clear the air because I don't want any uh, anybody, I want you to hear it from my mouth. Um, I started a recall petition on uh, Monday morning, it, and within five hours I had more than enough signatures and they were validated, and uh, Mr. Turco was going to be served this evening with the intent to recall. Um, I sent a letter to the editor. Some of you may or may not have seen today's Calaveras Enterprise, but I'd like to take the time to read it because I think it's a three minutes, George. Okay, I'll read it fast. Turco quit in face of recall movement. On Monday morning, March 7th, City Council member Craig Turco learned that a recall was underway to unseat him. I circulated a petition with the intent to recall Turco and the appropriate number of signatures, 20, were gathered. Actually, I gathered 27. He was going to be served at the March 15th City Council meeting. On March 10th, he resigned from the City Council. He gave us a reason for his resignation. In a superfluous statement, he could no longer serve as he had another opportunity. I believe the real reason is that his insatiable ego couldn't bear the thought of possibly being defeated in a recall election. 
for his uh, bullying behavior during the past two years, and it finally caught up with him. Many voters I have spoken with express the same viewpoint. Angels Camp citizens know him very well by his total mistreatment and lack of respect towards most everyone he has come in contact with. Many of the citizens in Angels Camp on this past Thursday were very happy to hear he is gone. I saw the announcement on the pinetree.net and I tried 15 minutes to reach City Hall to confirm it. But the phone line was busy. I believe people were trying to confirm the report as well. I think people were in a state of shock. Now the City Council has the opportunity to appoint a citizen of Angels Camp or call for a special election. Over 20 months ago, I believe the City Council members made the wrong decision by not appointing someone and instead had a special election that cost the taxpayers of Angels Camp $7,800 when the city was $1 million in the red. Today the budget is still in the red and I am hopeful that the City Council will appoint a resident of Angels Camp and save $7,800 who has the right people skills, common sense, and who really cares about our citizens and our residents. Save our taxpayer money. Now Rick Downey is gone, Craig Turco is gone. In my humble opinion, the two have driven our city into the ground during their reign of terror. Now is the time for good governance to begin. <laughs> Respectfully, George Fry. So I didn't want any questions um, not unanswered. And here's a copy of the re recall petition with the signatures. The other thing I wanted to quickly share with you is this week is Sunshine Week. Now you want to know, what is Sunshine Week? Sunshine Week was established here in California. And it has to do with several different uh, um, laws in California, the Bagley-Keene Open Meeting Act, the California Public Records Act, the U.S. Freedom of Information Act, the Ralph M. Brown Act, and the Sunshine Ordinance. And what it's about is transparency, and it's about good governance. And so I can, I, I uh, hope that you, you folks on the City Council, who are doing a good job, the four of you, I hope that you will continue to be transparent to all the residents here in Angels Camp. I thank you for your time. Uh, if anybody's interested in the, the actual notice of intention to circulate the recall petition, they're welcome to get it from me. The only other thing I'd like to share with you is that um, a person sent me an email and accused me of playing gotcha politics. That's the furthest from the truth. I will not, not tell you who that person is, but I'm here to tell you it's not about gotcha politics. It's about good governance. And if we don't have good governance, then I'm going to take it upon myself as one resident in this city to make sure that we do have good governance. And I thank you for your time. And Mr. Mayor, I thank you for running good meetings. Thank you, George. Any other public comment? No more public comment. <clears throat> public comment is closed. Move on to consent agenda. The following consent agenda items are expected to be routine. They will be acted on by the council at one time or without discussion. Any council member, staff member, or interested person may request that any consent item be removed for discussion. I have a minor question on the uh, on the parade. It says it will start at 10. Do you have any indication of the length of time that you're asking for permission for the uh, highway to be closed. Is there anybody here? I don't. Okay. I, I know it would be a nominal amount, but it, it usually it would say 45 from, minutes. Yeah, yeah, it would usually say so in the resolution. Uh, I think we should uh, modify that so the resolution would show how long it is. Okay. It just says 10 a.m. right now. Yeah. Minor thing, but we should we should state what the request is. Okay. Anything else? We can then vote on the whole on the whole uh, consent agenda. I make a motion that we accept the uh, consent agenda as item A, which is the minutes of last meeting. B is the youth parade, and C is the authorizing city clerk to advertise for two vacancies on the planning commission. I second that. I have a motion from Councilman Lynch, second by Councilman Raggio to approve the consent agenda with changes. Any comment? 
If not, all those in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 4 0. Under the regular agenda, item number A, acceptance of council member resignation. Acceptance of council member Greg Turkle's resignation and consideration of filling the vacancy. As you know, we've had one council member, Mr. Turco, resign, and I will accept a motion to accept his resignation. I'll move that we accept uh, council member Turco's resignation and uh, proceed with uh, consideration of uh, filling the vacancy. I'll second that. Do you need any public comment? Public comment on this? Question? Um, The question uh, before you is, in your deliberations this evening, are you going to determine whether you're going to um, put out um, information to appoint somebody or whether you're going to hold a special election? Thank you. Thank you, George. <coughs> you made a second? I did. Okay. I have a motion by Councilman Lynch and a second by Councilman Morris to accept the resignation of Council Member Craig Turco. And consider and consider the filling the vacancy. Right. Question? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 4-0. Now consider of filling the vacancy. Mr. Mayor, uh, do you have 30 days in which to uh, either appoint someone or call for a special election? So, okay. so what we should do tonight then is, is authorize the city clerk to advertise for applicants? If that's the wish of the council. Pardon? If that's the wish of the council to appoint, uh, yes, that's what you would need to do. We already have a uh, uh, advertising that we did when Mr. Raggio was was left us, and I would recommend that we do the same on this. Yeah, e either way, it's a vacancy under the government code right. sections that apply, so you can use that as a template if yeah. uh, you choose to do so. Well, I, I personally think that that's the absolute way we should go. We don't want to spend... Right whatever it costs to do this, and it varies. It depends upon what the county feels like charging us that day. Anyway, uh, I would entertain a motion. Well, first of all, I'll have public comment. Any public comment on this? I'd entertain a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I didn't see you. You didn't jump up very quick. Well, I was going, but I seen somebody else move. Um, I would recommend that we certainly not spend on a special election. You guys have the capabilities of appointing the, appointing the person that needs to be there. Let's don't spend the money. We don't have it, you know? My personal view. Thank you, Jack. Any other public comment? Yeah, no. Okay, I would uh, entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion, a motion to appoint a new city council member and forego an election. And we need approval to have Mary advertise for it, correct? He said forego the election. And just to add to that, to uh, have the city clerk uh, carry out the procedures uh, for the yeah, hearing. And have, and, can't hear you. Can't hear you. and have the city clerk carry out the procedures for the election, for the appointment. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> I'll second. Okay, I have a motion before the council from Council Member Raggio, seconded by Council Member Morris, that we give the city clerk the authority to advertise to uh, fill the vacancy on the city council and forego an election. I have a, I have a comment to make. Yeah. Go ahead. I'd like to make a comment. Uh, you, you probably don't have in front of you the, the verbiage that was used the last time, but just to give you an idea how we'd follow it, uh, following uh, uh, Stewart's proposal, 
uh, city council has been vacated due to the recent uh, resignation of council member Turkle. This is the this is what we used last time. If you are interested in serving on the Angels Camp City Council until the term is ended in December uh, 2012, I believe it is, uh, please submit an appli appointment application form to the city clerk. Interviews will be held at the blank city council meeting, and that have to be w within 30 days. A and I think that would therefore be like the 8th of April. Call for a special meeting. Or, or we may call for a special meeting uh, if it goes longer than that. To be eligible to hold the office of council member, you must be a resident of Angels Camp and a registered voter. Thanks for your interest in serving your community. And that's the kind of notice that would go out. And that's also, what, which should be added on, or you can pick up application pardon? at City Hall. 5th of April is your first meeting. Yeah. But which would be the 19th. <clears throughs> yeah. Well, the, it's within 30 days, and the announcement was made on the 10th of March. So I think the 19th is too far. The 8th would be within it. Fifth. Hmm? Fifth. Oh, the fifth. Okay. Was I saying? The Can eight? we go two meetings, or do we have to adhere to that thirty days? You have to adhere to the thirty days. The thirty so days. You can call for a special meeting. You Thank know. you. April fifth. April fifth. I would say would be the. Okay, that's not very far off. Okay. That's three weeks. Any Otherwise, other? Any otherwise, other comment? No, I, that's that's yeah, one of the to understand. The time draws near. You, know, you can check and see what kind of interest you've got. And uh, if you don't have a lot, then... Can you, can you speak so I can hear If you don't have a lot of interest in the position right away, you can uh, go ahead and set a special meeting uh, right out to that 30-day limit. Okay. With, within that 30-day notice, Richard. Okay. Any other comment? No? Hmm. Okay. I... Uh... A call for a vote. Wait, Alt. wait, wait. Oh. wait. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> it takes me a while. To get yeah, you got to get worked up here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was some legislation last year that gave uh, 60 days to refill the position, or was that for something else? I haven't seen that, Elaine. I will double check it, but I have not seen that. I looked at the yeah. government code That's section right. today, but yeah. I think you're right. I thought there was, that had filling any vacancies. Yeah. All right. I will check then and see if that's yeah, been. That's good. All right. Thank you. Anything else? It's your last chance, Lee. No. Okay. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 4 0. Item number one 2011 Street Improvement Project Presentation. Adopt plan specification for street improvement project and direct city engineer to solicit project bids. Vanessa. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on, on what this project proposes. I think we're going to have to pull down the screen and relocate you guys for just a second. Okay. Stick right now. It's right above your shoulder. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be quick just to kind of run down what the project includes. Um, we're doing a significant amount of work on Rolleri Bypass. Uh, the portion of the project here, we're talking about excavating the roadway right here up to Murphy's Grade Road, right about to the top of the hill. And this is because from what we can tell, drainage from these parcels is sheeting across the road and it's making for terrible roadway conditions. So we're going to include an AC swale in there when they do the overlay, and we're actually going to put a valley gutter across Rollary Bypass in this area in, in an attempt to um, fix the problems out there. From here back, we're doing a two-inch overlay. And there is the existing Rollary Bypass Road 
the drainage comes off of these parcels here and just sheets across the road and, and we think that's what's making these problems out there. Um, this is right at the intersection. There's Murphy's Grade Road over there. Oh. And this is looking again at Murphy's Grade Road. Um, and here's where we're going to put a concrete valley gutter just to take this drainage that comes off of the Grade Road. Also part of this project, we're looking at Acorn Drive. Um, going to do a slurry seal on that. Angel Oaks. Oh, I guess that's the Acorn Court. Um, more slurry seal there. And then this is Leaf Court. And that would be the base bid for the project. Um, to make sure things kind of come in under budget, you know, trying to just make sure construction costs don't go too high. We're proposing this area here as an additive alternate. Um, the other portion of the work was, was up here. And Foundry Lane is also on the list for roads that need improvement. That's also an alternate. Um, that would get a type two slurry seal. These roads back here would get overlays. What's your estimate for the total amount? Total amount. Let's see. Um, I understand we're budgeted for $112,000 for construction. Not offhand, I don't. I'll double check, but my understanding was a, it was just slightly over 112k. So the engineer's estimate for the base bid, I'm looking at 105, about 106,000, with a 10% contingency that bumps us over the budget and brings it up to 116,000. Um, the additive alternates for Live Oaks Drive, um, we're looking at 22,000, and for Foundry Lane, I'm looking at another 12,000. Twelve and a half thousand. Well, how much is the Rolari bypass? Uh, let's see, the base bid, which included Rolari bypass and this acorn court, leaf court. <coughs> so those so that four roads, um, that's coming in at, without the contingency, $106,000 for the engineer's estimate. But you're going to hear it's been kind of higher lately. Well, and the bidding environment has been very favorable lately. Um, we do, when we do these estimates, we base them off of recent projects and the bid prices that are received. We look at the low bids, we look at the high bids, we try to take kind of an average um, to come up with these. Stockton Road, now we did Stockton Road overlay, what was that, two years ago? The construction on that was about 80,000. Um, so, you know, I think we're in the ballpark here anyways. Yeah, I wish you would check to see if that, I think the 112 down below the meter. I'll double check. <coughs> I know it's in the budget somewhere. Any questions? That's it. That's it. That budget did not include engineering. <laughs> And that could be that the number you guys are thinking of includes engineering. Ah. That might be what the deal is. Yeah, very, very bottom. Okay. Thank you, Vanessa. Any comments from the council? No. Jack? No. Uh, the only comment I have is that it seems, uh, by the looks of the Rolari Bypass, we might be able to spend $112,000 right there. Rolari Bypass was a significant portion of this project. Yeah. And it, it's because of the roadway excavation. You know, an, an easy fix would be to come grind out the bumps throw an overlay over the thing, and but then you're throwing good money after bad. Um, and I understand from talking to Public Works that this is an ongoing problem out there. It's a yeah. safety concern. I understand there was a motorcycle accident out there a few years ago. Um, yep. So it is something that really just needs to we be. Got anyway, yeah, thank you. My comment is 
trying to drive down Valeria Bypass Road sometimes an adventure. Right. Because the potholes get pretty bad. <coughs> Any public comment? Yeah, Bob, Bob Mary, 312 Catalpa. Um, I thought about three years, maybe it's been four years ago, we had a 10-year plan to repave all the streets in the town. It's been done. Mm -hmm. I, I know that, but I thought it's going to keep on revolving. Like the first street that was paved 14 years ago is now up again. Aren't these streets, besides where we are, and I understand that's the big ticket item, uh, that's probably not in the rotation, but isn't like acorn and leaf and all that in that rotation process? They are. They are. So they're already budgeted besides this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. The money's available. Okay, good. <coughs> Any other public comment? Public comments closed. Bring it back up here, Stuart, Jack, I, I don't have any have questions. Anything? I'll entertain a motion. I, I would move that we adopt the plans and specs from the city engineer to uh, do the street improvement project and direct the engineer, city engineer to solicit our, our project bids. I'll second that motion. I have a motion from Councilman Lynch, second from Councilman Raggio to adopt plans and specifications for street improvement project and to direct the city engineer to solicit project bids. Comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, 4-0. <coughs> Item number two, suspension of LLD property assessment, which was referred by the Personnel Finance Committee. Consideration of suspending the LLD assessment pursuant to Streets and Highways Code Section 22656. Uh, you have a comment on that, Richard? open this one up. I think it was less than two years ago that the council uh, posed the question as to whether the city uh, could uh, supplement LLD funds. That was the condition evidently at that time of the, the LLD. Uh, as you will recall, I gave you an opinion uh, regarding the streets in the uh, area known as LLD number one. And you determined that in fact the streets uh, benefited the public. Uh, and did not specifically or specially benefit the uh, lots in the LLD. So based upon that, you removed the uh, cost for maintenance essentially out of the LLD budget. I think that probably is the biggest factor uh, in triggering what now appears to be a large surplus in the LLD. There are two committee members here to address uh, the numbers for you, but uh, under the Streets and Highways Code, uh, you do have the responsibility if there is a surplus or uh, for that matter, if there's a deficit, to make an adjustment in the, uh, the account of the LLD, which is, as you know, uh, an agency of the city. It's not a separate legal entity. And you as the governing uh, body uh, will have to make uh, that decision. So with that, uh, I know Gary Corletto is here and Mr. Uh, or Carmen is here to uh, provide some background uh, on how we got here. Those speaking in favor, Gary or Carmen? Want to talk to us? Sure. <coughs> um, it was about six months ago that I, I wrote the council. Address, Carmen. What's that? Give us your name and address. Oh, uh, Carmen Rosado, and I live at 379 Prolina Terrace in Angels Camp. Uh, it was about six months ago I wrote to City Council and told them that I thought that the proposed assessment for this year was uh, invalid because uh, they had not taken into account the balance in the operating fund, uh -huh. which, as the attorney said, references section 22656 uh, of the code. Um, and so I guess what's on the agenda at this point, and I, I, I make a couple of comments. What I see on the agenda is, is to uh, possibly eliminate the assessment for next year, um, and I don't know if that uh, is uh, a, a proper remedy for assessing this year. I'll leave that up to the city attorney. That's out of my ballpark. 
But if, if the city council wants to look at the proposal to defer the future uh, um, assessments, then I would like to share some information with you. Um, I'll wait till you all get it and I'm going to walk through the attachments that I've just handed out. Okay, if you will just turn the cover sheet over and there's a page that says executive summary, that's not mine. Um, that's a copy of the engineer's report um, from the city of Rio Vista for this year. And I only show that as a, an example of how they had surplus in their budget. And as you see in the square on the page, they budgeted 245000 for costs this year. And then it says less the contribution from the operating reserve and the net assessment then is zero. And that is, you know, the type of thing I think this city needs to do when we have a surplus. If you would turn the page, page two that's numbered on the bottom, what I did here is I took the current fiscal report that ended February 28th for the RLD, and I added to that the outstanding invoices we have and the estimate to uh, complete our, our work for the fiscal year. And if you drop down to the bottom, under the estimated June 30th operating fund balance, I start with the current fund balance of 532000 I subtract both the outstanding invoices and the estimated balance of the year expenses, and I add in the additional revenues yet to come in uh, that's projected by Melissa. And it shows we would end with 553,000 and change at, at uh, June 30th. And that's the starting point for next year. But you have to then look at next year's budget and see if, if the fund balance needs to be carried over to, to satisfy that estimate. Now, if you turn the page, there is a, a rough cut at next year's budget. This has not been approved by the RLD committee, but it gives you an order of magnitude to show you that if we start with the fund balance of 553000 and we have expenses, which are somewhat higher than the last couple of years, of 143000 and then we defer assessments, but we still have a small amount of interest income, then that fund balance would still end up being 412000 after next year's expenses. And since you've mentioned that we don't have these large capital programs like road improvements and road overlay, the only requirement the LLD has is to maintain a operating balance, a year end, of at least seven months of expenses because it takes until January before we get our assessment money from the county. So we must have that pot. So if we had $144,000 budget, we have to have seven times that or $84,000 starting the year so we didn't run out of funds. And the other two pages are just backup as to how we put this together and, and the information from Melissa. Thank you. So, any questions? Thank you. Gary? Nothing? Any comments up here? Or should I go to public comment? I want to make questions. Public comment? You know, Bob Mary, three twelve Catalpa again. Um, I think this action is a little premature. It's uh, we have one outstanding large project that's coming up. 
on the wetlands area that Dave Richards is working on. And before we give away money, I think we should find out how much that's going to cost. And instead of having to come back and say, hey, we need some more money again, why not just wait a little while, get the estimates in on that, see where we're going. The, uh, the plants in that area are 10, 12 years old now. And I think some of them are coming to maturity that they're going to need to be replaced. And that will be a big cost item also. So I think we're a little bit premature on giving money back. If we can hold on to the money we have right now, let's get some of the projects completed so we know where our budget is. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Any other public comment? My name is Paul Bukowski, 555 Meanwalk Way. Uh, a member, I'm a member of the uh, LLD committee, and uh, I think Carmen did a pretty good job of explaining where the uh, revenue is and the amount that we have uh, in the operating budget. The thing that was not mentioned was the fact that we've been working on this RFP, which uh, Dave Richard has uh, and talked about earlier to present to the city council uh, next uh, meeting in April. And that uh, is going to deal with the wetlands restoration and maintenance, which uh, expenses uh, estimated for that are virtually unknown at this point. And I just ask that you consider that uh, that be uh, determined or get a uh, pretty good estimate of what that might cost before you uh, consider suspending the uh, assessments for the LLD in the future years, because if you uh, assess too much back uh, and have to come for a special assessment, that might be uh, uh, more difficult to achieve. So I would just like you to consider what the expenses might be associated with that uh, RFP and the completion of it uh, when that uh, starts and is presented to you next uh, month in April. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Good evening, Mr. Mayor <coughs> and the Council. I'm Clarence Hartley and I live at 552 Spring House Road. And <coughs> I was involved actually with the formation of uh, what's known now as uh, Green Orange Creek. And <clears throat> I've been very active and very familiar in those activities. And I think that it's, it is, uh, frankly, seriously premature to do anything with those funds. Uh, they're the first funds we really had. Uh, and so there are many projects that need done. Start with the entrance to, to Greenhorn Creek. I mean, that area there has never been maintained much, if at all. <clears throat> and we have some projects that uh, certainly could be done, but if the money goes away, then the money's gone. I think it's also better, I think it's also better to um, not give away something that you can't repeat. It's like a dividend to a corporation, is that once they declare a dividend, they should continue on and on and on. Well, we're sort of a dividend reverse. And everybody understood when they moved into Greenhorn that there was that $300 annual assessment. And I think it should be left just as it is and get on to another topic, and I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you, Carter. Any other public comment? <coughs> I don't live in Greenhorn Creek, but Greenhorn Creek is part of the city of Angel's Camp. And I would concur that it is premature. Unless there's some legal reason, I think you should wait. And I agree with our retired president and banker, Clarence Hartley, about the dividends. You know, if we, if we, if we in the city spend that money now, and then we have to do a new reassessment. 
it could be a whole lot more expensive. I think at a, at a minimum, we need to wait until we see what the laundry list of projects are for the LD before you move forward. Thank you. Thank you, George. Anybody else? Hi, I'm Scott Lee Hill at 338 Mill Road. Um, there, there might be a, a statutory reason or a legal reason that we need to suspend the LLD contributions, and I understand that. Um, I hate to go backwards and recapture money from some folks who may not have even paid it. You know, you, people have moved out of place, they paid their LLDs, and now we have new owners in there and they're going to get a windfall. So I'd like, I'd, I'd like to see us. If we have to stop the, the contribution, that's fine. But let's wait as long as we can. Is there a, is there a, stat, is there a date that we have to, uh, the, the, is there a final hour before we know what goes on the property tax bills, or is there a date that we can wait until to see if we have more information? Yeah. There, there is a statute of limitations if you're going to uh, essentially uh, attack uh, the numbers that the council uh, finds. Uh, on the other hand, I think uh, it's clear to me that there are still some components of the puzzle that need to be put together, uh, in addition to, to ones that uh, the folks here tonight have brought forward. Uh, I believe that if the council comes up with a number that they're comfortable with in terms of a surplus, at that point in time, uh, I don't think the statute of limitations is going to matter. If they have a surplus, the code says they return the money in one form or another or give a credit to the account, the LLD account. Okay, and then going forward, is there, a, is there a date set, you know, these things show up on our property tax bills. Is there a date set that those have to be submitted so the county can send out the bills? I think, I think that's been done. For the following? That's been done for the following year? Not the next year, no. So, so there's nothing to be done until the, that date? The, the uh, correspondence received from Mr. Rosado, I believe, was several months ago. And uh, so, uh, in his defense, I mean, he, he did the right thing. He made a claim at that point in time. What I'm telling you is a practical matter. If the council determines that, number one, there is a surplus, they need to determine the amount of the surplus, and then uh, that has to be applied to that account. Not half of it or a quarter of it, but the entire amount has to be applied. Okay. And it has to be applied by what date? Uh, I guess my question is, for the next, to affect the next property tax bill, do we have to make the decision tonight or can it wait till July? No, it, it can wait for a period of time. And uh, again, I think, uh, first of all, we don't have a finance director here tonight. She's going to have to look at uh, the information we just received. Um, it could happen in two weeks if we have all the answers in terms of what the surplus is. Well, but it, we'll have reports, there'll be information coming right. in that's critical to projected Correct. budgets. And the longer we wait, the more information we'll have and the smarter decision we can make. Yes, okay. I agree. Thank you. Public comment? I guess John Johnson, 78 Tuolumne Street. I guess this is probably uh, more of a question than not to beat a dead horse, but to get back to the, to the roads. One of my thoughts and concerns, I, I was not here during that process, and I wish I had been because I have some very differing ideas on what should have been done about that. But after Greenhorn was developed, we had, the city had some major problems with the roads that was caused by some of the landscaping being down the center of the highway. And I don't know what Taking the roads out of the picture now, out of the LLD, if there is any major problems caused by our landscaping that's caused to the roadway, will that come out of the LLD to, to fix those problems? Or, you know, when you have underground watering and those trees growing in the middle of our busy highway, it will cause some structural problems to the roadway. At that time, that starts occurring, or wherever, where, if, if not there, someplace else. If there's a problem close, caused to the roads from the landscaping, would that 
repair come out of the city road funds or would that come out of the LLD? I just wanted to throw that out there in case if you've got a reserve. Thanks so much, Jack. Yeah, just curious. <laughs> the city took on the responsibility for maintenance of the roads. However, if there are negligent actions going on, I think the city's going to determine uh, that and attempt to get their money back if they have to take that action. But the, the, the issue that was presented uh, back then was whether these roads really just benefit the people in the LLD. And that's not the case. And we have Proposition 218 and other laws now that require that there be a determination of uh, to what degree the improvements benefit the property owner as opposed to the general public. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, I couldn't find any LLD anywhere that had roads and streets in it. Uh, I can surmise or speculate about how that happened back in 1993 or 1994, but, and I think you might have a better idea than I do, Jack. But in all fairness, and that's actually one of the things the council has to look at as the governing body of the LLD, they have to make sure that there is a benefit to the people in the LLD that's above and beyond the general public in driving in these roads. So that was the background and the rationale for, for that decision, which eventually led to uh, surplus of funds building up, and I'm sure there are other factors, but that was a big one. I, I feel compelled to make a comment back to Jack. Can you hear me? Uh, Jack, uh, the road you're speaking about, I think, is the Greenhorn Creek Road, yeah. where there, that is already a city road. It has always been a city road. So the other roads we're talking about are branching off of Greenhorn Creek Road. There's Selkirk, Smith Flat, Macaulay, uh, well, Selkirk and Macaulay Ranch Road and Smith Flat Road are the three roads that go in. But the, the, the planters down the middle of the road with the trees growing in, that's already and always has been a city road. But that's that Green, Hunt, Green Hunt Creek Road. But isn't that landscaping part of the LLD? Mm -hmm. Yes. The landscaping is, yeah. and they're continuing to maintain that landscaping. Ex exactly, and, and I... But they're not, they're, not put, they're not doing the road. And, and I'm not arguing okay. any of this. What my question was, if, if one of the trees in the district should create a problem to the roadway. I'm just using that as an example. You have a reserve of funds and there's always a problem can come up. And that was just one of, of I, I can sit here and think of numerous ones that could possibly happen. I know there's a lot of ifs, but, um, but I'm just thinking that, that well, anyway, I think you get my point, that I'm just curious as, as to would that monies come out of the city coffers or then out of the LLD. That, that was just kind of a <clears throat> thought, but thank you. Okay. May I readdress? Step up there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. With all due respect to uh, our senior people from the LLD committee, I don't recall anything in the assessment that's, that I've been paying for whatever number of years uh, was intended as a windfall to anybody, but rather it was for the maintenance and improvement of the LLE district grounds in, within the uh, confines of Greenhorn Creek. Thank you. Thank you, Clarence. Carmen, you had something else? Yeah, I think, I think there's a few things that need clarification. The first is someone asked for this upcoming year, what's the deadline? And I believe the code, the California code says by the third week of August, you have to turn over the assessment requirement to the county. Okay? So that's fixed in, in California code. Um, it, it could be the second or third, but that's about when it's required. Um, the point I want to make is that the city council last year accepted the engineer's report and the budget that went with the engineer's report. At that time, the city council did not look at the surplus. 
I wrote the letter saying that this current year's surplus was a violation of California code, and it still is in violation of California code, and if the only remedy is to return the assessment that has been collected, then so be it. But in the meantime, the city is in violation of a California code, and I think the city attorney agrees with that. Um, Thank you, Carmen. Any other public comment? You want to address that, Richard? I think the issue and the problem in taking immediate action is that you have to determine what the surplus is. The council and the public are well aware of the fact, for example, that uh, there was allegedly $400,000 missing from the funds. We don't even know yet what's happened with that because, in part, the county is taking a great deal of time to uh, crunch their numbers and get them back to us. So, uh, yes, technically you may be in, in violation, but I think you have to have a number, a surplus number, before you can apply it. That's the problem I see. So what do you recommend? We continue this? Well, first of all, I think the finance director needs to look at the information that you received tonight. And uh, then, yes, I think you should continue it. I think it needs to come back to the council. It's something that does need to get resolved. It needs to go where? Just to the finance director? Well, the council probably hasn't reviewed those either, but no. certainly the finance director. She's integrally involved in this process, so. Can we do that in 15 or 30 days? Can we do that by the second meeting of next month? That's an answer I can't give you. She'd yeah, have to probably sure tell you, but you can put it back on the agenda so that uh, if we have additional information uh, uh, towards getting this resolved, we can grind that in the formula. Okay. So what do we need to do? Do we need to make a motion to for continuance? Yes. And, 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 and referral. Have a big date? And, and referral to the finance director. No date specific? Uh, no, you should set a date specific. You gotta go with date specific. Yeah, I would think maybe your second meeting in April. Okay. Any, other? <clears throat> Any comments from the council? We're back up here now. Public, public comments closed. Okay. Well, I, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd make a motion that we uh, continue it to the uh, date certain of what that date is, I was talking about, let's see. Uh, that would be April 19th, that we bring it uh, here, and uh, if we have all the information uh, from the finance director by that time, uh, we'll be able to act on it, uh, otherwise we'll have to continue it. But that, I, I would make a motion that we uh, continue this to April, 19th. April 18th, is it? 19th. April 19th. I'll second it. Comment? No, I, I, need, I need more information. Yeah. Okay, I have a motion by Council Member Lynch, second by Council Member mm -hmm. Morris to continue the suspension of LLD property assessment until April 19th council meeting and the results of the inquiry by the finance director. Question. I'm not going to send it to the personnel finance committee. I just said that, George. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. I heard the bank. Uh, no, it's not going to personnel and finance, no. Well, that's my question. No, it's not. It's just going to the finance director. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 4 0. Item number four, or excuse me, three. Public hearing, adopt ordinance number 449, an ordinance to amending title 15, building and construction, chapter 1504, section 1504, we've got a lot of sections here, .020, the City of Angels Municipal Code. Steve Flagg here. Tell us about it, Steve. I'm Steve Flagg, the City Building Inspector. <coughs> New codes every three years, it's a cycle and uh, it's a tradition of the city and actually this year the state mandates that each jurisdiction adopt an ordinance saying that we have adopted the new codes. These are all new 2010 codes. They're um, building codes, residential building codes, uh, green code, 
um, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, and on down the line. There. <coughs> the thing, the only new codes this year are we actually have a new residential code that breaks off from just the regular California building code. That includes the infamous fire sprinkler, residential fire sprinkler, which is now required in all, all homes. And then there's a new green code also. Anybody wants a copy of anything, come by the office. It's actually on our website too, so all the new codes are on there. Anybody wants to take a look, they can take a look. And that's about it. This is one of those, you gotta do it things. Yes, we do. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Any other comments? Yeah, just one question. Steve, okay, you I'm said sorry. the only new code is the fire? Uh, there, there, are actually, there are actually two new sets of codes. One is, uh, we've never had California, I shouldn't say never, but hasn't had an actual residential building code. So that's new. It's called, it's uh, Title 24, Part 2.5. And then there's also a new Cal Green Code, which uh, deals with uh, energy saving, water saving measures for residential and commercial. There are, man there are five mandatory, mandatory measures for each type of construction, plus there are some voluntary tiers that are in with that. All that we're looking at is just the mandatory parts of the Cal Green Code. Thank you, Steve. You Thank you, Steve. Any public comments? You wish to put Oh, open public comment, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> digital public hearing. Good. 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 Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had a question for Mr. Flagg. Is that are the fire sprinklers retro or just on drawing a new permit? Steve, you want to answer that? It is just on new permits. And it actually, if you were going to add on to your house, you wouldn't have to sprinkler any alterations to your house. No sprinklers. It's just for new construction. Any other public comment? Okay. Let's bring it back up here. Comments from the council? Mm -hmm. Oh, got to do that. Nothing? No. Uh, I, I'll, make it, I'll, I'll make a motion that we adopt uh, the ordinance 449 uh, as, as previously discussed and having the public hearing tonight. Well. I'll second move. It's been moved by Council Member Lynch, second by Council Member Morris to adopt ordinance number 449 which is an ordinance amending Title 15 of the Building and Construction, Chapter 1504, Section 1504-020 of the City of Angels Municipal Code. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, 4-0. Item number four is a public hearing to adopt ordinance number 450. Fire Marshal, adopt ordinance number 450, adding Chapter 8.44 to Title in health and safety of the City of Angels Municipal Code imposing controlled debris burning. Nathan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Nathan Pry, City Fire Marshal. Uh, this is a public hearing for uh, adding Ordinance 449, uh, the debris burning <coughs> ordinance. And uh, this, this ordinance, like the, the next <laughs> ordinance, uh, I was asked to look at uh, modifying our, the way that our ordinances read for these two sections, debris burning and fireworks. And uh, when I did some research, found out that we, we don't have a current ordinance that, um, that covers these two topics. So I drafted one uh, with direction from the Safety Services Committee. And uh, the, the new ordinance would uh, closely model CAL FIRE's burning, um, their burning restrictions, and actually our, um, our burn hours and, and days are governed by CAL FIRE and by County Air Pollution Control. The, uh, the only change to the way that we're currently operating um, 
on, on burning is that residents would be required to obtain a, a burning permit free of charge at the fire station. Uh, this goal is to um, educate the, the citizens on proper ways to complete control burning and to um, have them acknowledge that they understand the rules and restrictions to abide by. Uh, those are the only um, changes to the way we currently operate, even though the way we currently operate isn't on any kind of ordinance or paper anywhere. Do um, you have any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question for you, Nathan. Um, how often do we have a, a burn pile that gets out of control? It, it varies from year to year. Um, I'd say average at least once a year. Once a year? Mm -hmm. Do we do we patrol for that, or how are we going to somewhat? How are we going to enforce this? Uh, we we get calls from neighbors and um, passerbys call the ECC, the command center, Cal Fire Command Center, and we get dispatched out there. Or if we happen to be out and uh, we notice that it's not a burn day and we we see someone burning, we approach them, or uh, we get we get mainly telephone calls or a dispatch from from ECC. Okay, but that. If, if you if you saw smoke on a non-burn day, that'd have nothing to do with permit. Correct, but we would if, go out. If they had a permit, it would still it would still be shut down because I could get a permit two weeks from now to burn. Correct. It, the, the permit is to have uh, residents acknowledge the rules and regulations and to sign that they they have read them and they understand them so that we have some grounds to go on saying that y you understood the rules and regulations, you signed the document, <coughs> you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and we can take further action. Thank you, Nate. Any other comment up there? Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Anybody want to have anything to say? Jack Johnson, 788 Tuolumne Avenue. One more law and one more tax, eventually. I don't like it. Any other comment? Scott B. Hill, 338 Mill Road. You know, a lot of times when I do uh, mill burning, it's small stuff. It's small shrubs. They are go out and trim the trees and, and just, you know, clean up the yard. And I do a lot of thing on the rock, spur of the moment thing. And I really don't want to have to plan to go down to the fire department, get a permit, come back and, and have it done just so that they can have more to go on if I screw up something. So I, I really, uh, I don't think this is a people-friendly proposal. Um, I think it's just, it's just more government and I really, I don't know, it just rubs me the wrong way. I, I don't think we should uh, proceed along these lines. Thanks. Any other public comment? Um, and for us, 1545 Tryon, I'm, we already have to get a county permit for burning. And I, I, don't, I guess I missed how this, why there's an o duplication and overlap. You want to answer that, Nate? Sure. Yeah, the, if you have a parcel of land larger than five acres, you're still required by air pollution control to get a, a permit from them, regardless if you're burning a small pile or uh, broadcast burning a couple acres. If, if you have a parcel of land that's five acres or larger, you're still required to obtain a permit from them. Um, and then also CAL FIRE requires you to get a permit if you live outside of the city limits. But currently, um, if you don't have a parcel of land that's larger than five acres and you live in the city limits, uh, you can burn at will with no restrictions uh, other than if you get caught by air pollution control. And uh, you can burn, you know, the theoretically anytime, anywhere, any size. And so that's why um, we're trying to put some, some rules and regulations on, on the burning. And uh, the, the permit would be good for a year. So you wouldn't be coming down every time that you wanted to burn something in the backyard. You wouldn't, you wouldn't make a trip down to the firehouse. You'd get a permit in, in the winter or whenever you decide to do that and be valid for one year from that date. Hey, Nathan, one question for you. Uh, in, in Ann's case, she lives back here and she's on five acres of, of property. So besides the county permit, would she also have to have a permit from from you from no. inside the city? She, she's not inside the city limits, but Cal, 
Uh, to my knowledge, it, it's not. But okay, then if it's inside the city limits, you get an, a permit from us, but you would not be required one from Cal Fire. Even if it's over five acres? Yes. So there's no there's not going to be a duplication of payments. Well, ours is free. Oh. Ours doesn't cost you anything. I, I think that uh, Nathan, uh, Nathan uh, Price's um, intentions are good and honorable. But I'm not so sure that we need to hold people's hands. You know, we need for them to be responsible for themselves. And the older I get, the more I feel like we uh, need less intrusion by our government. So um, I would encourage you not to support this and vote it down. Thank you. Thank you, George. <clears throat> Any other public comment? Hearing none, public hearing is now closed. Bring it back up here. Comments from the council. <clears throat> yeah, I have a few, Jeff. Um, I, I agree with the audience, uh, a few people in the audience, that uh, we have enough laws now than putting any more laws on us. And uh, Nathan, I'd like to say you did a heck of a job here, well written. But again, uh, Scott made a good point there. I burn a lot of stuff on the weekends. and. I don't want to take the time to come down here. I do a good job of it. Also, there's uh, people in this audience, the people I know here, that have pretty good sized parcels of land. So they may want to trim some trees, and they're going to have a pile over four by four and burn it out in the open. And, and, the, perm and the ordinance allows for that? Not without a permit. C correct. Right. And so it says in here, Where's the size of the burn pile, Nate? Uh, it should be permit to burn. on the um, burn. either. Is this one right here? Which one, Jeff? Permit to burn. It is uh, 8.44.040 8. 0. burning requirements uh, so B. If you start trimming trees, like my neighbor down the street, he's going to have a way bigger pile than that. And he's going to wait for a good damp day, and then he's going to burn it. So I, I can't, I can't buy it either. Although I again, understand. Like I say, you did a good job of writing it. It's not something I would have done. And one, one thing, it, it doesn't limit the number of piles that you can have. So you can have a number. Would, would you consider it if we didn't have the burning permit? If you no. accept the ordinance? I, I wouldn't accept that, Nate, just okay. because it's another, it's another, it's another law. It's another ordinance that we have to follow. We're in a rural, rural area. We're not in a, we're not in a large city. We're in a rural area out here. We're we're taxed enough. We're ordinanced enough. I I don't agree with it. I, I even have a problem, and this is out of text, but I even have a problem with the five anybody over five acres having to get a county permit. I can agree to the burn days, but but having to go get a permit every time I want to set a fire, I'm not I'm not in favor of. Jack. Uh, no. Wayne. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's up here now. I'll, I'll entertain a motion. Well, we had a, uh, a discussion of this on February 1st, and uh, we've heard new things tonight. I learned one thing tonight, and that was the permit would be applicable for a whole year. You make one visit, and uh, it tells you uh, the, the details. And, and, uh, and it's a permit uh, to burn. Your burn hours are established. Right now, there's no burn hours established. You can burn any time you want. And this would say 7 p.m. to 8 a.m. All those people that are responsible, it's not the issue. It's the irresponsible person that this is trying to educate. If you want to burn in the city limits, you got to do it between 7 p.m. and 8 a.m., and you got to do it on a permissive burn day. And you, you, you apply once a year, uh, and it's good for the whole year. Uh, I'd, it doesn't sound unreasonable to me. I'd, I'd make a motion that we adopt ordinance number 450. I have a motion. I have a second. Motion dies. Last of a second. Item number five. 
Public hearing, adopt ordinance number 451. Nathan, you're back on the ground. I'm back up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, item number, number six is uh, ordinance number 451 that uh, is similar to debris burning. Currently, we have nothing, no ordinance that uh, deals with fireworks um, uh, like the debris burning. Um, it's, it's pretty much open to however you want to, uh, to use fireworks in the city. This puts uh, restrictions on, um, on times, on uh, the when you can use um, uh, fireworks in close proximity to, um, to dry shrubs. It also um, would limit it to safe and savior only, which is, is a state law, but this would also um, uh, strengthen that by having a um, municipal code that we, could, uh, that we could control fireworks by. Um, it also limits um, so that kids aren't doing this unsupervised. It, it would require adult supervision, um, and it, um, it limits uh, the close proximity or um, actually anyone else from other counties being able to come over here and use fireworks on uh, private property or, uh, or public property for that matter. This is for um, our citizens only. And if we decide to open it up um, at the high school like we've done in the past, we, we can still do that. But this would, um, this would be primarily for our residents only. Thank you, Nathan. Okay, one more question for you, Nathan. I won't pick on you too much this time. Oh, sorry. One question I asked last time, and I want to make sure this goes in public comment, is uh, in a cul-de-sac in, say, Angels Oaks, and the neighbors are out there, that's public property. The neighbors are out there. Everybody's consenting. Yeah, that's the way I understand it. That that's okay for the neighborhood to get together for the kids yep. to shoot fireworks. Yes, the, as long as the fire hoses out. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. I'll open up the public hearing. Any public comment? Um, Scott B. Hill again, three three eight Mill Road. Um, to the extent that this ordinance would would exceed the limitations already set by current state law, I would I would object to it. We already have laws in place to help govern this stuff. I like the idea of having a municipal ordinance, so if there is a citation, it goes to the city instead of the state. So that's cool as long as it doesn't exceed the state's, um, you know, the, the, it doesn't exceed the, the provisions we already have on the books. Nathan, you want to answer that? It would be our intention to to issue citation under municipal code and uh, on, on a routine offense. I mean, if someone used the fireworks that was against the municipal code and caused a big fire, burned down a bunch of houses, we're also going to look at prosecuting on state or you know, federal charges as well. But on, on your everyday offense that, uh, you know, somebody was burning too close to dry vegetation but nothing happened, no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't prosecute above and beyond municipal code. Does, does that answer your question? Um, well, partly, I like the idea of the, of the city getting the funds instead of the state, or the, or the, or the, but I don't. I still want to be more restrictive than the state already restricts us. And I, and also, I've, I've got teenage kids. A little leery of, if they're running around doing something, and I tell them not to. But they all of a sudden, I'm, I've got another municipal code I've got. I just, I just don't like more laws. Less is better. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Okay. Did he answer your question, Scott? I don't, does that ordinance exceed state law? Does it exceed the in, in some instances, rates? in some instances, yes. It, it does. Uh, you know, the state the state law does not does not say uh, how close in proximity you can burn to dry vegetation. Um, it, it just says if you start a fire, we're going to prosecute. We we don't want you even near dry vegetation for the the safety reasons that that brings up. And you have to find dry vegetation. You got to do that. I think that and that's one of the questions I asked. Did, does it actually say in there, Nathan, that we can't have fireworks in a cul-de-sac in Angels Oaks? No. But it does say 
uh, it does say we can't we can't have fireworks on public property, which those streets are, are public property. That's correct, but like I, I addressed it before, it, it, it's my belief that when the person builds the house and pays all the fees that are included with building the house and, and the mitigation fees for the roads and everything, that's my interpretation that that is part of their property. Yes. I agree. George? Um, I concur with Scott. Um, it's generally not the kids that are the problem. It's the big kids, the adults, that are the problem with fireworks. And um, so I, I really uh, can't support this and hope that you don't approve it. Any other public comment? Close the public hearing, bring it back up here. Council? Stuart, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move that we adopt ordinance 451, which we talked about on February 1st. I'll second. It's been moved by Councilman Lynch, seconded by Councilmember Morris, to adopt ordinance 451, an ordinance which is adding chapter 48 and title and health and safety of the city of Angel Municipal Code imposing fireworks use and restrictions. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? No. Passed 3 1. Calendar? You got a calendar over there, David? We have none. We have none? <laughs> Meetings adjourned. Yeah. Yeah, this is an early one. Mm -hmm.